everyone, welcome to Simon on the Sofa. Um, got the sound of the singing bowl today and the sound of the rain in the background, which is really nice. And I'm with a wonderful uh, guest sitting with me on the sofa today, which is uh, Chris Parrish. Hey, Chris. Great, great to be here, sitting <laughs> on the sofa with you. Yeah, so we'll experience what happens here. <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll curious. <laughs> a real pleasure. I'm interested, that's yeah, yeah. good. I like, yeah. I like it. Um, so I've just met Chris just a couple of minutes before. We just had a lovely tea and a, a nice uh, mini conversation. And um, <clears throat> we both said that we don't really know, uh, you know, what, what, what we're going to do or what we're going to talk about. So which is always, as you guys know, how, uh, how I like to start. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much for, thank right. you very much for, you know, give, giving up some time and so oh, on. I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so I think similar to what I, we oh. said at the beginning, it would be really lovely if, if, you know, if you, what comes to mind if I say to you, right now in evolution, we've moved through uh, 12, 12, 12, it's been a big year, you know, in terms mm. of if mm. we could have a conversation or if you, if you could mm. spark a conversation right now, uh, which we know is going to go out to the world, mm. um, what, what comes to mind when, when I ask you that? What, 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 how would that, what would spark from that? Well, I think for me, I'm still a little with, uh having talked several minutes just before we started, and I think that the potential in conversation itself between people, because I'm a, a great believer and very passionate about evolution, but I don't just mean about, you know, species or stars or something cosmic. Mm. I think when it comes down to it, what I'm interested in is what's possible between people, what's possible at, you know, the leading edge between people when we engage um, sincerely and genuinely and actually interested in what can emerge. I think emergence to me is a, 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 big, a big one, which is related to evolution, but I think emergence, I mean, what new can occur? What can uh, come about that's more than what was there presently? Mm. And, and I think that there's a lot to it. I, th I think it's, it's, uh, it's something that's becoming more and more recognized in a lot of fields, you know, that there's something it's not just a modification, but actually new possibilities, new potentials, new capacities, just new things I think can emerge. Yeah, in, in, through in the, the conversation. Right yeah, yeah. And through, for example, through conversation, yeah. but I think that's an, an important one because it's a way human beings can in de directly engage in consciousness together. I mean, in one way it's quite simple, but I think the potential there, depending on what we do with it and what what context we meet in, and what you know, what are the conditions? I think there's there's, um, there's unlimited, almost unlimited possibility there, yeah. and I think that's what I'm really interested in because I think that that can change things. Because if you can change how two people relate, that's the change in culture. That's mm. that's a change in society. And you know, in a, okay, in a small way, it's not suddenly going to. Uh, get rid of hunger in Africa just because that happened. But nevertheless, that is, I believe that's how things change like mm. that, mm. by sincere people who are interested in creating something new and, and something that can include more, that's more integral, that, that can take into account more perspectives. And I'm personally interested in that and yeah. becoming more. Yeah. I think that's what turns me on. Yeah. I, you know, that's Likewise. actually what lights, lights yeah. me up. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's like, what, what's possible? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah. So, yeah, great. So I knew Chris was a good person for the sofa. He's on the, he's on, <laughs> he's totally on the same wavelength. I'm exactly the same, you know, in terms of like the power of just mm. sparking an authentic converse, uh, conversation and what that can lead to. And as you were speaking, I was a, a thought come that, that that's sort of how we've, conversation is sort of how we've got to where we are. Mm. Um, and what's really um, sort of turns me on is, is the, the term you used, you know, inspires me and so on, is, is also what can, like you say, what can emerge out of authentic conversation? Because I, I, I've known, I know in my, uh, in my own journey that so many of the conversations that I was having up right. until maybe the last sort of, you know, just to put a time on it, four or five years, were well, conversations, and some of them were probably teaching me and learning, but, mm. but they, were, they were what I was calling of a low vibration. Um, so I don't know what comes up for you when I say that, but it's like, yeah. so it's not to say, not to judge like, okay, these people are having conversations that are not relevant whatsoever. They are relevant. But I'm really, I think my curiosity is taking me into this idea of unity, which we sort of mentioned, mm. but this idea of 
is it possible that that is it possible that we can unite and and you know like you say create mm. new culture and and yeah, new yeah. you know new systems and new societies from right. you know from these from everybody you know normal yeah. people just having these these conversations right, is that right, like right. do you think that's a starting point or are we are we further along in that is there's i know you're involved in a yeah, number yeah. of different things is there yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what's emerging out right i mean i just to pick up on what you're saying that you know uh you were mentioning about previous conversations in past years and you were terming it like maybe lower vibes or something like that. Mm. The way, way I tend to look at it is what's the context that the conversation's being held? What's the setting? What's the field for that? For what can emerge? Because I think what can emerge depends a lot on the field it's being held in. Mm. And we create a field all the time. We're always in a field. You know, yeah. People think, well, it's some magical thing. You create a field. But, but we're always in a field. We're in a field out in the street, on the bus. The, you know, it's what, what's being shared, what, what's the sort of uh, level of, of interaction being shared. Yes, yeah, so it's think, a container. Yeah, and so, say for example, if I'm, you know, like all of us, you know, very habituated to an old separate psychological self-sense where life revolves around me, it's not fair, I don't like it, you know, uh, why, why am I, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I feel good, but often it's fine, well, yeah, I'm just moaning about this, and I'm yeah. a vic You know, the, the, there's often a victimization in that. I mean, we all have it. Yeah, I'm not totally. saying we, and we all we all know that it's like an old pair of slippers. Yeah, I think that yeah. it's like a default way you can go back. And if I'm in that mode, and you're in that mode, and I say, ah, oh, yeah, it's rotten, isn't it? Life's yeah. really yeah. tough. You know, uh, it's it's you know, yeah. it's all right for some. Yeah. And you say, yeah, that's all right. We create a certain field. There's a certain intimacy in that yeah. and, you, and you could say well that's being honest and just saying how I feel <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I think there's a difference between honest you know that sort of honesty just sort of saying well I feel shitty yeah totally and there's a difference between that and I think what I would call authentic or what you're calling a transparent yeah, conversation totally. I think it's you know there's something deeper mm. you know so I think that's uh, and one of the most important things is, is where are we coming from? Yeah. You know, do we are we coming f from something open ended, where we we actually want to know? Mm -hmm. We're not already convinced that, uh, that this it's is not, it. Yeah, it's not possible because yeah. I already think, oh, this is how life is. Life's like this. You know, I've, yeah. I've been hurt, I've been traumatized. Yeah. I know what's possible. You know, no yeah. point just being naive and talking about new this is or that. Let's get real here. Mm. It's tough, and you've got to fight for it, and that's all you're going to get. Yeah. You know? Then what's possible between us isn't going to be very much. And if you feel the same, totally. we'll share that. Yeah. yeah so we're right. blocking it, aren't we? We're yeah. blocking any so, sort of growth yeah. to come. Yeah. And I think that that's that's the, the container for that conversation, and what's going to emerge out of that. Well, it's not that something can't emerge, but it's going to be severely limited. Mm. So I think that that's the sort of interesting thing. I think is is what 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 are the conditions? You know, and it's well, it's all about what we bring to it. Yeah, totally. But I think often people think, well, I'm just here, you know, and sort of sit back. Well, no, I'm here. I'm ready for anything. But often there's a um, maybe not so conscious attitude that I'm separate from. And if anything good happens, well, I'd be up for that. But I'm not going to actually yeah, I'm take not gonna, a step I'm forward. I'm not going to take a risk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not actually going to lean forward out of myself to make it happen. And of course, it, it doesn't happen. Because yeah. I think that um, that which is best in us you know, because I think innately we have a, a, I think human beings do want to go forward, do want to find out. I mean, in a good sense, not, not out of some neurotic trying to gather knowledge so you can feel secure. I think it's part of the human beings throughout history is to become more, to stretch, you know, to go beyond limits. Yeah, and I think totally. the more we meet in that and we can actually start to do that more consciously, you know, we bring out the best part in ourselves. I feel that that's a, a lot to do with it, and I feel it's not. It doesn't have to be. It's not something we're creating in us. I think it's nat naturally there. Kids have that, um, you know, that thirst to find out and, and curiosity mm. and interest. I think it's just that. And as adults, sadly, we often are not in touch with that. I feel, and I think it's a big. Uh, it's a shame because as, as adults, we have all the rest of us more developed, and we often. Um, then don't develop. I mean, I always remember this thing we were talking just before about integral philosopher Ken Wilber. Yeah. He often has said something, that, and the first time I heard this, it really stuck in my mind. He says that, you know, people often develop up to their early 20s, 
but then when they become an adult from about 25 to 55 they flatline and maybe as they get into uh, later in life they start to think well, well what you know what have I done it, yeah what yeah. have I done does this yeah. really when they get like a thing. kick start they yeah. get kick start perhaps, again perhaps but, but maybe, it's the same yeah. thing if, if a, yeah, it's a big chunk if a big, the best yeah. part of our life in a way yeah 25 to 55 it's, I mean that's, 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 that's is, a huge chunk you know and of course that's a big generalisation I know but, you yeah. know because the, there are always people who are on at fire, different levels like and different, yeah of course but, but I think there's some truth in it as well yeah, so, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, t I mean, again, there's, you know, as always, there, there, there's a lot there, which is beautiful. So, in, in, in terms of, in terms of like human, you know, humanity and being in that, being in that surge, you know, that, like you said, that child enthusiasm, that excitement, and mm. and that, um, that that zest, that yeah, zest yeah. for for life as well, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and it is through my journey, I've noticed that there's so much that seems to need to be stripped away. I don't know why why it's there in the first place. I don't want to say that you know it is definitely a conditioning. A lot of it's addiction, mm. you know, habitual conditioning, um, comforts, you know, comfort zones, and so on. Yeah. Um, do you think that's a process that like each individual, you know, like really does need to mm. go through a process of stripping away and 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 um, and letting go of stuff? Because you know, I love that. I love that that recent the recent thing that's emerged for me mm. is that there really is nothing to seek. You know, this idea of seeking, you know, constantly seeking to either fix, better, you know, and do all this stuff, mm. that, that can actually sometimes create a real um, um, block in people's growth that we were talking about. Yeah. Because what happens is we go, well, you know, it takes you back to the two guys that are a little bit low. It's like, well, you know, I've got to deal with this, I've got to deal yeah. with that, I mean, the past life this, mm. past life that, or karma's wrong there, or, you know, um, I need to go to another event or workshop. Yeah. Because I've been doing workshops over the past year, I, I sort of got to the point, well, to tell you you are a miracle, to really just to wake up to the idea that you're a miracle, you're a you know, divine mm. miracle, that really is indescribable. And really, and really, we're all working it out as we go yeah. along. We're in this beautiful space of really just trying to work out yeah. this idea of creation, whatever, evolution, yeah, this yeah, yeah. creative driving force that, that you said mm, is like, mm. from birth is, is, is driving us. And at some point, as Ken said, maybe between 25 to 50, we, we lose that to some extent. And then we feel that we need to almost fix it to then maybe, you mm. know, um, get that spark back. Mm. I suppose my thing is, is that, you know, is all this seeking even, even causing a block? Is it like, you know, right now, are we just, can we oh. just let that go? And I know you meditate in a number yeah, of things, yeah. so it's just a, yeah. Well, I, I think I'd, I'd sort of, I couldn't give a categorical answer one way or the other totally. because, I, because I think that, um, I'd say for myself, the seeking's been an incredibly good thing and I've yeah. seen that in other people. And I think, look, for in, the, uh, in terms of the, you know, the history of spirituality through the ages, you know, a lot of great people, people who really advanced things, have been seekers. They were driven to find out. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, I became a, a seeker when I was sort of, uh, at college because I, I had a relatively easy life and it just seemed to me that you know I could just see how it was going to unfold you know I'd finish college I'd get a job and family I'd do that Rarely, yeah. and it, it was it, I hadn't been particularly traumatized I had I'd had relatively everything I wanted yeah, you know okay I mean I had a sort of you know good middle-class life of my parents were very nice they gave you know yeah. it was easy yeah. I hadn't been bullied and, and anything yeah. gone wrong but it seemed sort of empty to me so there was something and I hadn't had any religious background my parents didn't even want to condition me they, they said no let, you know wait yeah. till you're an adult they didn't you give, choose they didn't you know um, you know baptize me or anything I never went into a church or anything, so I had no religious background whatsoever but it was a fascinating thing I found that something was 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 coming up for me I was interested I wanted to find out and that got me interested in this but it was it was um, entirely something from internally for me yeah I feel so in that sense being a seeker I felt for me it was really important to find something yeah but then not to sort of see oh now I've found something yeah you know and now but there was something missing there was something missing yeah. whatever there, there was, you know there, there was, was something, really something missing, missing yeah because life didn't make sense to me yeah. at all and and but then I think it was also that, that, on the other hand, later on as I've gone on, I feel like more and more waking up to the fact that that, that life is a perpetual finding out. Yeah. You know, we're always becoming more. Yeah. And and that's a really good thing. And and it's different from this sort of the person who's just always sort of uh, 
unhappy with what they've got, you mm -hmm. know, the sort of neurotic seeking, yeah. you know, something lacking, because I think that's built into the, the way we're conditioned, the sense there's almost like a, a mantra goes on in the back of our mind, there's something wrong, there's something yeah. wrong with you, there's yeah, something wrong exactly, with life. exactly, exactly, that's wrong. a very key point. You're, you're bad, there's something wrong, it's wrong, yeah. you're alive. You're not enough. Life. You're not enough. Yeah, you're inadequate, not enough. self doubt, not you're not gonna achieve. Yeah, you're not enough, yeah. why are you born anyway? Well, yeah. I think yeah. we all have some sort of, I mean, we wouldn't ever articulate it like that, but it's almost as if there is something, because I think it's part of, you know, it's no one's fault, it's part of being in a culture, we, we you know, we have a very heightened sense of individual, which is great, but also we're not connected in that individual, totally. you know, it's great being an individual, it's fantastic, you know. Of course, I'm all yeah, I'm not yeah. Trying to wipe the uniqueness it away. is wonderful. But, but often the, there's a downside that goes along with that, the conditioning that, that we're also separate, and then people feel, you know, there's that sense of being a bit alien. Yeah. Why am I here? What am I doing? As if I'm yeah. not really part of this whole process. With, well, even though it, it doesn't make sense intellectually, because if you think of it, well, how could I be somehow apart from this whole thing? But it doesn't matter emotionally, we feel that. Yeah. And so there is that sort of um, separation that I think is really, really important to, uh, I feel, to have some sense that that's not really true. A deeper, yeah. I don't think it's like a, um, an all or nothing thing. I think it's an ongoing thing. I think it, we feel it more and more. And I feel particularly the more we're engaged actually with the life process. Because whenever we're really engaged, those thoughts don't arise. Exactly. Like if you're, if you're in the middle of something creative or you're having a good conversation, you don't ask, well, you know, I wouldn't ask at this moment, well, why am I here? Is this, yeah. is life just a bad joke or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is yeah. it just some meaningless, you know, mixture of, you know, that some people say, well, there's no point to it, it's just a lot of uh, chemicals bouncing around. Yeah, so know, I get the, involved. The sort of team of monkeys with typewriters and the, they type out Shakespeare yeah. complete just by chance, you know. You don't ask questions like that because you, I think in the, in the moment when you're in touch with, with the, this um, current of life, you know it makes sense. You, you don't ask because you, you're in it. it it's it's self-validating. Mm. And so I feel that that's one of the biggest ways that actually gives us a, I feel, a really good sort of confidence in life. And more confidence in life, and I think self-confidence comes out of that rather better than the other way around. Because some people are really confident, but you can be confident, you can be arrogantly self-confident. Exactly. Think I'm great, you know, because I, you know, just feel I'm great because I, well, some people just feel they're great anyway, yeah. even if yeah. they don't know anything. Yeah, well, I've achieved certain things and yeah. I've got, and some you know, people awards and accolades. Some people have for feeling they know, because they really do know a lot. Yeah. But, but either way, it's a different thing than I feel, than if there's a confidence in life itself, in the process. I think that gives one a sort of, a different sort of confidence. It's not a sort of hard, sort of puffed up, yeah, thing. yeah, it's yeah, more, which is coming from a place of still separateness yeah. and survival mentality almost. Yeah. It's like, you know, I need to yeah. be confident and, and be this yeah. person who seems to have yeah. everything in place where actually I'm not. Right. You're talking about more of a deeper engagement. You're, yeah. you're, you're, and you're also, actually, you're, you're talking about a deeper engagement which actually moves you beyond, almost moves you beyond the, the question, the questioning. Or the, or at least the limiting questioning, or the, yeah. or the, or the disconnected yeah. questioning, or the self doubt. It yeah. moves beyond that question. It doesn't and it doesn't say that it stops you from questioning, but it moves you beyond yeah. the limiting. But then there's an authentic questioning, which is, I feel, what we were talking earlier, this innate human interest to become more, to be, not not make myself bigger, but to, because I think that there's a sense that and our most creative moment, we just want to go to the next step. We just want, it's not about me becoming better, it's about what can, yeah. what can we do, we, yeah. what can emerge. Yeah. And I think, you know, in, I, I feel it's a, another way of putting it is that I think it's making, expanding our idea of creativity. Because mm. often creativity is seen as a very personal thing, but that, that's in very much in the context of the individual. And you know, some people are really, really, really creative and do great things. But I think what they're really in touch with in that is is a universal urge. It's not, you know, it's not my creativity. Yeah. I'm really creative. It means one's more in touch with that creative drive, which or impulse, which I feel which every, is there. everyone which, has. Which it's is just there. a question of how much we're yeah. in touch with it. It's not mine. It's not yours. And mm. I think if we, the more we open to that. I feel it allows more to happen between us because we're not, 
there's not that possessiveness about it. We're more interested in what, what can emerge rather than, hey, look what I did. And do we even, do we even, I know you said we all innately have it, do we even have it or does it actually, is it already there and we, 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 we become the conduit for it? Do you see what I mean? So it's like, it's almost like it's always, it's always just there, you know, in this, in, in this energy, in this flowing around and yeah. independent, because I know there's a wonderful woman, um, is it Elizabeth Gilbert that, that um, she did a talk on TED about this, about creativity. Oh, yeah. and I'm sure, I don't know if you've seen that one. And she, she, it, mentioned, no, I, I, she mentioned a, uh, um, this um, poet, don't quote me fully on, on the whole story, but she was mm. talking about this um, poet that actually see, heard the poem coming Mm. over the hills, <laughs> heard the poem coming over the hills. Nice. It was coming, coming, coming. As it come past, she started to write, 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 and it went past her, through her, and then off. And then as she was still writing, she was trying to get down what this poem was bringing her. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it was really beautiful. Quite, it was quite, you know, when yeah. I heard it, I was like, wow, that's so, you know, just to even, to even, I don't know, comprehend that, to visually experience that, to just, you know, the imagination mm. of that even, is that th this poem mm. was coming through. And it yeah. was like, if you were, if you're ready for it, then have your pen and paper ready, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna express myself with you, through you, as you, yeah, 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 and and yeah. you know, we're gonna create this this beautiful poem. Right, right, right. Um, and 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 it sort of seems that I don't know. That's yeah. what I'm sort of feeling from yeah. like this creative impulse, the creative force that you're that you're sort of talking about that is really innately there, maybe, yeah. or, and 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 is accessible for us when we, you know, yes. move, you know, move into that mm. space. Yeah. No, that makes sense. When and I. Well, what I find is interesting when you start talking about it like, like this, I often get in conversations like this because at one moment it feels like that, like something is, is coming and sweeping away, like it's something outside. You, you can't claim ownership at all. It's not even in you. Yeah. You know, there's like something coming over the hill. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, forth. yeah. And, and it can feel like that. And I think that's a sort of, you know, that's a very beautiful, pure sense of that, of, of just being out of the way for something to emerge. But at the same time, I think it is, is also, you can, it's not the whole picture because it's not really apart from us. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, yeah. if, I mean, how could it be? How can, how can anything be? Because, you know, I, I mean, I think I should say, because the way I see things, I think every, everything since, um, well, when, when something first came from nothing, from the Big Bang, you know, billions of years ago, that is all one creative process. It's one unitary process that's gone through all different phases and through life, through evolution, you know, to get to, at least on this planet, as, hu as human beings with all our sort of extraordinary capacities, all our development, and we're the product and result of, the, of all the striving of generations before and all they learned and everything like that. And the driving force, I would say to me, is this creative process. This, this, the, the, the is one. You know, it's not a separate one. It's not like I've got one and you've got one. You know, the, if you trace it back, there's, there's no gap when, then this suddenly, we, we didn't suddenly materialize somewhere separate from this process. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm. Well, we are this process. So it's also, it's, it's us. You know, because we're part of it. Mm. We're, we're a product of it. Yeah. And you say, yes, it comes through us, but also, here's, here's the interesting thing for human beings, you know, it's different, say, for a plant than just, you know, just is. It's just a plant, just, it, you know, expresses itself as plants do. Mm. But as a human being, we have the extraordinary capacity to reflect back and, and actually start to make, um, you know, um, will start to help, help shape the direction things are going mm. because we can be conscious of this in us. We can be conscious of the creative process. And w we bring our own faculties and our skills and, you know, like say, the, po you know, the poet, he, he, someone might have felt that but couldn't actually have written it down. Mm. You know, it took the skills and the aptitudes and the development and the sensitivity of that person yeah. and the ability to, you know, even in that, to write a poem, it wasn't just, it was a, it, was, it wasn't just some, you know, I'm saying it depends on the person too, yeah. even to recognize it too. So it's a sort of mixture because it, we're mm. produced by that, but also we, we are that process. So it's sort of a bit paradoxical. 
as always. Be, yeah, be, I was going into I was going into the paradoxical thinking then as well because I was thinking yeah. about this whole idea as well, just to uh, because you um, can, it's too much for, for the rational mind. Yeah, the rational mind can never do it, and I know that this is one of the reasons why I have these conversations as well because they, the conversations always lead me to that place of you know that yeah. not knowing place, you yeah. know, in many respects. Do you see what yeah. I mean? Because you know, and you being a uh, um, just a little bit older than me, not much older than me, I know, but you know, a little bit wise, well, a, li a, li a little bit wiser than me. Well, I don't know uh, why, older. <laughs> just a little, just a little. But in terms of like, because what's just sort of backtracking, but also being, yeah. you know, coming up to where we are, is like what you said about the idea of seeking, and then you know, there's something empty, but now there still seems to be this idea of seeking and so on. What's really lovely is seeking not to fill yourself, not from a lack. Yeah, not from a lack. I love it's that. Seeking and I, to become more for its yeah, own sake. Yeah, and I, and I really wanted to highlight that just for people listening just to recap yeah. on that because that's a very there's a very there's a big difference, big difference to a huge difference between this idea of seeking where I need to fix and there's a lack like you just beautifully yeah. said to actually I'm part of this you know this yeah. this unfolding which is which mm. is a, you know and and I'm not trying to fulfill myself I'm being I'm almost being it yeah I'm being yeah. My, myself well, or whatever that is the fulfillment yeah exactly the following that and enacting yeah. that and, yeah. and engaging and then with having that. and then actually having um, to what you said yeah. in the last bit is like actually having a, almost a conscious awareness around then going, wow, I can be a part of this. Yeah. I can actually take some responsibility to be yeah. a part of this process. Yeah. You know, and that that then brings in, you yeah. know, a beautiful, well, a, a lot of meaning and then a lot yeah. of a lot of like, well, hold up, wait there, this is like, you know, to one minute I didn't have any meaning and now I'm actually part of this whole universal unfolding. It's like, wow, you know, it's like, that's an opening that some <laughs> probably are very resistant to as well. Cause it's like, all yeah. of a sudden it's like, ah, you know, that can make you breathe deeply and, yeah. and so on, you know, and so, it's, it's liberating it's and also liberating. it can be a bit scary too because yeah. it's what what me yeah I mean, because it also means I can't just complain about yeah you know being a victim of everything yeah because hey, you're an active agent I'm an active agent yeah. you know yeah and but that's a great thing that's in, that's empowering and I do like this I, I feel it's so important is what I've learned the, the more I'm in touch start to align with this uh, well, I'd call it this authentic self, this, um, this uh, also evolutionary impulse, this creativity, which is in, in all of us. Mm. The more I can start to consciously bring more my attention to that, and it's not like anyone can just do it. It's, it's a new way of being. It's, mm. I think we're all just experimenting yeah. with this, to be, to be honest, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, because I, you know, I love that you've said that as well. I just want to just want to throw yeah, in there because, because I love I love that you've said that with the experiment as, as well. Because again, we're not we're not sat here, and I know you're not saying yeah. that this is it as well. It's like like we're moving yeah. into almost. Um, and I know many people talk of like the mystic age and all this all these different knowingness of what may unfold. Yeah. But when you say that, it's like for me, it feels very much that actually we're moving into uncharted. Yeah. Uh, Areas which 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 is also exciting and brings a lot of curiosity. Yeah. Did you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and definitely. you're saying that we're playing with this and experimenting yeah. with this. And also, I was going to say the other point is that I think often people don't fit are not sure what's the point or what's the meaning of life. Yeah. You know, and we've thrown out a lot of the old certainties. You know, we don't believe, we don't believe in a, you know, a god in the sky. Yeah. Like some mythological. Yeah, there's a lot being, of stories crumbling. Be, because it doesn't make sense to us, and, that, and that's part of our development as, as individuals of, you know, and that, that, that's fair enough. We don't, believe, we don't believe in, you know, just our allotted place in society or allegiance to this country or, or this group or something. We should just do our duty and live our life. Because a lot of time, people in the past, did, you had your allotted place, you just lived your life, that was it. Yeah. You didn't question why. I mean, there were all, all always extraordinary people who did, but yeah. generally... But it was, it was, it was less, yeah. wasn't it? It was minimal. Yeah. And so now we've got to an interesting point in our you know, modern and postmodern times where there's a lot more of us, at least in the West, you know, who, have, um, who don't have to worry about survival. I mean, we're not going to starve. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not worried about our own physical well-being or whether we're going to be attacked, you know, yeah. or something like that. We're not living in fear. So it's like, well, what then? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got all this freedom, and yet there's 
paradoxically, there's often no meaning. Yeah, but it's funny you said that because you said that we're not living in fear, but, that's, but, but, but many of us are still. Many, many are. So it's yeah. a different no, layer no, of I fear. Mean, I, know, yeah, fear. I know what like fear no you mean. Yeah, like you, yeah, 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 exactly. Or give me your food. Off, of course. You say the wrong thing, yeah, you're going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is not the case in a lot of places still, you know. But, but, which is still there, isn't it? But yeah, we don't, yeah. Feel, we don't feel a sense of, uh, uh, I don't know, sort of gratefulness or a sense of liberation from that we've often we feel victimized i've got so many choices what the hell should i do yeah so i which what, can create a, yeah. could create another block yeah. as well and what i'm the interesting thing is i mean i'm not suggesting you take it up like this but i think for me this whole notion of evolution were part of one process which i think you know it's scientifically true is like the creation story for our times you know we, we are you know this is the big I think the big idea is evolution, and m much more so than what Darwin brought in about just the evolution of species. I think it's evolution of, of it's evolution of, of human beings. It's evolution of consciousness. It's evolution of culture. It's evolution of our views. It's evolution of our values. Mm -hmm. It's evolution of meaning. It, it's every way you look. I think actually, the, the, there's a sense of things can go forward, and, and people in a lot of different fields at the leading edge are sort of asking similar questions, you know, and there's a recognition that it's not about the individual, you know, it's through collaboration, it's working together, that almost like a, f a human being, you can't be a full human being in isolation, it's with others yeah. that full potential can emerge. So what I'm saying is that I feel that to the extent I've engaged with this, this gives its own meaning. Yeah. Not because not it's a, uh, a pleasing idea or a comforting idea, I believe in evolution, but because, but because when you're in touch with that, you know beyond knowing that you know somewhere beyond the mind. You don't have to, you don't, those questions don't arise because you know that life makes sense because when we're in touch with that, you, you feel you're at the heart of life. You're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing mm. because it, if one's on the pulse of life, it, you, you just know it. It makes sense. Yeah. So, 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 so yeah. So in that in that in that state, you know, creative people think yeah. this. They get absorbed in what they're doing. Well, and they're so gone. Yeah. Yeah. But even taking it be out, out of that. Um, yeah. But you're taking that out of that context. separate that separate self again, yeah. and you're talking about a collective. Just a, a I collective do, I do yeah. this particular thing. Yeah. I do science, or yeah. I write poetry, or I, you know, create pottery or something. I mean, that's all fantastic, and, and it's great. But yeah. But that's saying, that's opening. Yeah. Yeah. It's still sort of even moving the creativity from uh, being linked to a particular product, an individual, mm. but saying, no, actually it's the nature of life. I mean, I must just tell you one thing, because I've, I've, been, I've been trying to make sense of this. I'm writing, I'm writing a book at the moment. I'm trying to understand a famous English philosopher, mathematician, I don't know if you know him, Alfred North Whitehead. No, not heard of him. Uh, anyway, he, he wrote this famous book on mathematics with uh, Bertram Russell at the turn of the century, you know, 100 odd years ago. Yeah. And then he was the, the, probably the originator of what's become known as process philosophy. And he realized that he, his fundamental insight, and he's is, is very hard to read, I'm, I'm more reading translators of him, but he, he had the idea that reality isn't made up of things or entities. He says that, that life is a, made up of occasions, that actually we're a movement, that life is a movement, reality is a movement. We, we're more a process than we are things. Mm. And, we, and actually it makes a lot more sense. But I think to look at things that way, and he said that the, 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 the ultimate for him was creativity. He says the ultimate was what he called the creative advance into novelty that he said, in a way, if you wanted to say what God was, it would be that. The created ad advance into the novelty. Creative advance into novelty. And uh, I, I'm trying to translate what he's saying into a m uh, more everyday language, because it's unbelievably complex. Yeah. But, but I, I get a sense of what he's, what he's um, talking about, th this idea that we are a process more than we are separate things, you know, banging around, rather than that I'm here in the audio and we just sort of we work around, cooperate, and bang together. But we're actually much more. We're, we're actually one, one process. And one process that, of many different parts. Yeah, and part of emergence of that is individuality. Yeah. You know, and then how does that? That that's got the classic, um, uh, paradoxical nature 
you know, we're one, but we're many, and there's, the, you know, yeah. how does it all go together? Yeah, which is which is also emerging mm. now more and more with this whole idea of love and this whole idea yes. of this whole idea of that we are all one, and this whole idea yeah. that's emerging at the moment around how there is no separate self as well, right? Yeah. Because that, that that idea that there is no separate self. So although, like you said, you are here, I'm here. There's yeah. not because it's funny what you just mentioned. Just and there prior. are individuals too, because right. it's real. There really is. Yeah, Simon, but, well, it seems to be. Yeah, there, there, there really Chris, is you um, and here, you and me here. But then, like you said as extreme well, extreme people say there isn't. We don't. Ex you know. It's well, this is what I mean. So it's not only is it all illu illusion or a hologram. You've got so much going on now. You've got the whole hologram, yeah. you've got the illusion, you've got that, you know, there is, the identities are breaking down and you mentioned dimensions, different dimensions, you know, you've got so yeah. much, I mean, you talk of emergence, I mean, yeah. you know, not just the internet, but the information age, but we've got yeah. so much um, information emerging yeah. through, you know, you've got the non-dualists that, you know, are very much like, you know, it's just, um, there is, you know, there's, there, there is no ego to deal with and you've got the other, you've got the yeah, other yeah, sure. philosophers that there is an ego and, you know, there's, an ego. so, so the thing is, is it, and listening to you now as well and you're, you're exploring, yeah. which is great, you know, you're researching, exploring a, a, a guy from, you know, hundreds of years ago yeah. who's, you know, coming up with this process. So for me, I think what's re been really interesting is that this idea of, of really, I don't know what this, what this sits, how this sits for you, but really detaching from all, um, from all uh, identity or even the idea mm. of labeling anything. Now I know that we have mm. to label mm. things, but in terms of, so, so for example, the minute, the minute we say that science has something, then because science has a yeah. little bit of authority, we sort of go, oh, it's science. Well, that must mean that it's somehow real. But we know science is constantly exploring deeper and yeah, deeper yeah, and yeah. deeper and uncovering and uncovering. And we know that mm. there's almost this infinite unfolding. Whenever we seem to think we've cracked something in this universe, the universe goes, hey, <laughs> woohoo. Yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not the whole picture. <laughs> you, did, you didn't look at this sock over here, did you? You know, you missed one aspect. Right. So, and then we've got this whole concept of like, you know, what I've been playing with is like, if there is really nothing to know, and there is really nothing to say, like I know you know a lot of the mystics and a lot of the, mm. you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, gurus out there and so on, and just people that are bringing through this sort of dialogue, is that, well, if there's nothing to know, if there's really nothing to know, that does bring you into a, quite a, a, again, a bit like what we said earlier, a bit yeah. of like a place of liberation, in mm. a sense, because it sort of brings you into quite yeah, a yeah. place of peace as well. Yeah. But then within that, there's this innate thing of, of, of doubt exactly. and, and so on, and you see what I mean? It's like... And, and not so, just doubt. You know? Th there's also, because in that, where's the creativity? There's also, it doesn't, it, it's not the whole picture. It's not the whole picture. And, um, my Definitely. understanding of this, because I, I just say my, my journey has been, uh, I first went to the, when I, you know, I, I talked about being a seeker and feeling like, you yeah. know, life, it didn't make sense. I didn't know where to turn. Yeah. So at the time, you know, I, I was, you know, as I said, a bit older than you. I did the, you know, the hippie trail. I went to India just because, I mean, not because I was particularly interested in India, just because I wanted to find out. I thought yeah. someone there must know. Yeah. Must know. And so many people go there. Yeah. And, yeah. and particularly back then, you know, late 60s, early 70s, a lot of, you know, it was really the thing, mm. journey to the east. So I did that, but that was to find out um, an answer to this question, well, what, what's the point? And, and, and to deal with, to me, this sort of sense of lack, this sort of sense of lack, lack in myself and lack of meaning. And I think, because I, I think the, the answer that's often traditionally given in the east, where they've, you know, had thousands of years of learning to go back to the source, back to before uh, the beginning, really. You let go, let go, you know, and the, there's a, a dimension of consciousness, a ground of our being that you can discover. Yeah. It, it's like that, that's a point where you, you can actually temporarily, at least while one's in silence, not engaging, if you go deep enough, you can go beyond all conditioning. Mm. There's no relation to anything because you don't see anything yeah. else. And, and that's, that's a classic um, path of the Buddhist. It's also uh, in the Vedanta, the Hindu. And that, that's, that was uh, the, the path I followed. Mm. And, and I felt like, you know, that there definitely was an answer found that for me of knowing, yeah, there's a point where there's a mystery, yeah. there's a source, yeah. and there is nothing more to know. There's nothing to know because you can't know. It's immeasurable. You yeah. know, and that's the deepest reality and it's also it's the deepest part of ourself. You know, and this is what mystics have been saying for thousands of years. 
But then I, I think what I've increasingly found over the, over the more recent years that that deals with that's really important. That's like a basis of knowing that somehow at root we can't really ever know. Yeah. There's a, there's a there's a part you know you can never the rational mind can't comprehend yeah. life, and you know we, we've overemphasized rationality and you know, but on the other hand it's brought us all these benefits without you know we had the Western Enlightenment we had science we had <clears throat> you know all the advances in society that you know in, enable us to sort of film this interview of but have also brought about rationality and and seen through a lot of superstition and cruelty we've had human rights you know individual rights that was also from rationality of taking no this isn't following to the end point rationality but at the same time the idea that that's the only way that you can look at reality that only if you can measure it see it yeah. taste it or you know that that's real anything else isn't real it, it meant that we we've got rid of all the richness of our interior mm. you know that the, the was part of a world before that was all seen seen now as superstition so i think yeah so that's just another it's, it's almost like that's just another experience another way to experience yeah this yeah do you see what I mean? And not to say that it's not beneficial, yeah. but it's another, it, it, it's still, yeah. like, like if there's really no knowing, if there's really nothing to, at the, you know, at the well, deepest sense of the Well, I was going to say, that wasn't the whole picture. No. Yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, that that's one side, yeah. I think. And, and I think that's really valuable as a human being, somewhere to have some sense, hey, I don't know. Yeah, because that, that can allow things to strip away, because, can't it? Yeah, it can always, it can make one more and more fresh to engage with things. But at the same time, what I'm just discovered and lots of other people too obviously have too that, that this innate interest to find out that's not from ego it's not from some lack it's it's what makes life really interesting that you know where we come to the realization hey it's really important to be here not just to get out of here not just find something beyond the world i think the the notion that enlightenment whatever that is or is is only about uh, transcending and leaving the world behind. I think that made a lot more sense thousands of years ago when people had, you know, life was really tough and the way out was to find it either in some future heaven or in going beyond the mind, going beyond everything and, and, and finding a realm of being that was beyond suffering, beyond anything. I mean, that, that was the traditional um, view of the Buddhists, you know, to find an end to suffering by discovering what the Buddha called the unborn, the uncreated, and he said that that's nirvana. But it, that isn't enough for us now. Just know it's really important. It's still true. It's yeah. not like that's not true. Yeah. Because that is a that is a basis that we can know now that there's some sense in, in between thoughts and yeah. everything. There's a sense that we're a, we're alive, we're being, but not anything in particular. Mm. And there's that part of us, I think, that the source that is always present. Yeah. But but then at the same time, there's an active current of life and we're really here and it really means something to be here and it's really important to be here. And I think the people who just stop with the, yeah. oh, there's nothing to do, there's nothing to know, there's no one here, I think it, it, it disempowers us as mm. people because I think, you know, there's, there's no point in conversation, there's no point doing this. No, there's no point doing anything. We no. might as well just sit here and no one yeah. says anything. Or the point is that yeah. that's the point and that's not the point, clearly. Yeah. But, but also, you know, as you were saying that, it's, it's, also, it's um, I say also, but just to, to, to um, there still is a lot of um, perceived suffering going on. Oh, so, so as we know, there is actual yeah, suffering. There, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, exactly. There's sure. a lot of suffering going on. So that's still going on. So the thing is, is that everybody's still a mass amount of people are still looking at this idea of of how to, you know, relinquish that suffering to, you know, to lose that suffering. Yeah. And, and you know, there are still many people going to India and many, you know, yeah. people. And I mean, you know, enlightened next. I'm, I'm sure many people come to, you know, and follow yeah. your work, Andrew's work, Ken's yeah. work. You know, the work that I'm doing. Everywhere, you know, people are still sure. looking for an answer to some extent you know and and i suppose you know in terms of everything we share which is so rich it's, it really uh, it, for me or it sounds like i don't know how this sits for you but it sounds like that we are life yeah there's no two ways about that mm. so we are life and what a gift that is and yeah. also if you can really just 
awaken to the fact that we are life. We are part of that, you know, that uh, that, um, yeah. that that look, what you've called the, the emergence creativity. We are creativity. We yeah. are, yeah. you know, this this driving yeah. um, wonderful uh, uh, whatever you want to label it as driving energy force. Like you said, even when you're at that point of of relinquishing everything and knowing that you know nothing, and there's a, a almost a pace of peace and 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 and, and um, uh, acceptance and mm. and liberation there. But there's still something within us yeah. that, that, that doesn't want to stop at that point. It's like, well, no, but even from there, even if that is a, a way of connecting to an authentic state, relinquishing even the idea that, you know, the, uh, the arrogance or the, the yeah. out of aligned state that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are somebody, even if to get to that point, it's, it's, it doesn't stop, does it? It's no. like, there's, there's like, now it's like, okay, how can I authentically contribute? You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, how exactly. can I contribute to this? Mm. And I think, you know, for me, I don't know, that, that word contribution and emergence that we've used a lot in this yeah, talk, yeah. I feel it really has, um, I don't know, it's, it has a sense of meaning. Has this, yeah. You know, I don't know, yeah, just yeah. know what I mean? It has a sense of, of meaning and, and like that the, I do have, I have something to give to this, this yeah. whole, you know, this whole yeah. essence. I agree. And I, I think one simple way of putting it that I've often th thought of is, and this applies to conversation, but it applies to life too, is on one hand, I don't know, but also I want to know, mm. I want to evolve, I want to be, you know, and they're both there, and yeah. they're both balanced, and you can say, well, how can they go together? Yeah. Because... But there's a knowing in there as well, yeah. isn't there? There is a knowing in there. There's a knowing There's, there's something, something, something comes through yeah. as a knowing, yeah, like, yeah. like, you know, um, I, I get these yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tingle I I sensations, know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Do you know yeah. sometimes you get like a, a tingling sensation or something, which, yeah. which like, when, I don't know, it's, well, there's, it's there's a knowing. It's, it's whatever some, drives you to do what you're doing here. Yeah. Like, why why yeah. have conversation like yeah. this? You could just stay at home and not bother. Yeah. But it's, it's that, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, whatever that is. We can term it by different names, but it, which is fueling all of us it's in our a, own unique yeah. ways. But I find it's also helpful in developing the quality of conversations, of, of this simple thing like, yeah, you come back, you can have like a really engaged conversation, fantastic, you know. But at the same point, I don't really know. I'm never gonna know. I'll never figure it all out. I won't know. Yeah. And yet there's an interest to, to find out more and, and a, you know, and to see what can emerge to mm. evolve, mm. and there's a, there's a drive to do that. That there's a not egoic, neurotic drive. It comes fr it comes from life itself, mm. and I, I think, and that you have both. Some people have more that just want to find out, you know, they just want to do and engage. But I think it it if they have more this sense of this depth, more that depth dimension of, uh, but somehow of knowing from whatever, whether they meditate or just from some experience or contemplation, life's a mystery. Yeah. The source is a mystery. It's, it's beyond limit. I can't know it. I'm never yeah. going to know it. No one's ever going to yeah. know it. It gives a certain some humility, enables you to let go to engage better with ideas, funnily enough, because mm. they're not bad. Sometimes people think, especially spiritual people, that like talking, they just say, well, you're just talking. This isn't real because you're just talking about things. Yeah. You, know, you know, those who speak do not know, you know, they yeah. sort of quote, quote from, you know, the ancient wisdom. But I think that's a different thing that's being pointed to. I, I think the way we actually develop and what will emerge is, <clears throat> is actually using language. As, language is a beautiful thing. It just depends what it's in the surface yeah. of. You know, it's an incredible uh, human uh, development. And, uh, you know, if it's if there's a genuine urge to want to go further, then that, that language is serving a, a sincere, authentic, you know, transparent purpose. Yeah. If, if it's just a sort of, you know, fencing, just to keep people at bay or to insist what I know and what I don't know, then, then it isn't. It's not language. I think people often feel they blame it on language, but it's not, not I think it's a wonderful mm. tool. And of course, when we have a conversation, it's not just a language, it's as much what's happening between the words as, as yeah. the words. Yeah, and, what's, and, what's, and actually it sort of brings us full circle because I know our time has flown by, but just it, it brings us full circle to actually what you spoke about in the beginning and what we spoke about in mm. the beginning, which was this container, yeah. which was this, this field, this um, um, getting ourselves into a, mm. 
a space within ourselves, an authentic space within mm. ourselves, you know, a, 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 a transparent place within ourselves to, you know, to let go of that which is not serving us as an individual to then obviously yeah. help that with the collective. And mm. then also to then allow the, 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 the conversation, the connection, yeah. the, the, you know, the engagement to, yeah. from that space within, you know, creating more of those containers. And, and people can do this, you know, people watching, they can do this. Sure. You know, you can do this at home, you can do this for your family. You can, experiment. you know, you can, yeah, you can experiment. You know, you don't have to, it's not even about necessarily going to any sort of set place, isn't it? This is, a, this is an individual, you know, this is what's, be what's beautiful for me, what's coming out of this conversation is that I feel that more, our invitation should be that more people should do this. Because yeah, yeah. for me, it's like, that's where the richness is. And I know you, was, you, you yeah, said yeah. at the beginning, and um, Chris, just so you know, has, and I was told as well, that has meditated like more than he's even walked around. So he's like, you know, an extreme, um, yeah. um, um, has done extreme meditation and, and entered that zone. And the reason why I want to highlight that, not to, you know, to paint yeah. any picture, but is actually, Chris, you, you said in your own words, wasn't it, that the, the conversation, well, what did you say? You said that although meditation's there, yeah. do you remember what you said in the beginning, just to sort of uh, end on, on that? Do you remember, because you said, well, when I meditate and I'm there, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there on my own and it's so yeah. on, but then in that, sense of communication and engagement, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, do you remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, because I've, I've had a lot of powerful experiences of, and confirming experiences of unity through meditation. That was right, yeah. Because of, of letting go, of, of allowing myself to sink, and to, to know that below anything, before anything, before I'm Chris, before I'm a man, and before I'm this, before I've had any story, before my whole, my whole shtick, you know, there's that, there's that sense of being, and that sense of being is not limited, it's never been hurt, it's never born, it never came, it never went. That sense of unity, and you don't feel, you know that you're not separate mm. from anything. And, and what I was, I was um, remarking on, powerful as those experiences are, and they are really powerful, I think I've had even more powerful experiences in genuine conversations with people mm. when all the participants have known beyond any shadow of doubt the unity, and that's in the midst of a vigorous conversation. It's not just sort of holding hands and saying om or something. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a lot easier. You can get a unity if you have a group of people meditating and, you know, because nothing's ruffled up. You yeah. Know, it's a lot easier. I mean, it's still, it's great. I'm not, di of I'm not criticizing it. It's, you know, I'm, it's I'm, what you I do. still you meditate it. Every, yeah, exactly. every day. But for me, it's a rejuvenation to engage with life. Meditation for me, is, is, yeah. an is to rejuvenate for engagement with, uh, with life. So I, for me, I've had more powerful experiences of, of unity, you know, and people can know, wow, we're having this conversation, you, we're individuals, and the more the person um, is free to be themselves, the more o autonomous, independence, they're more an individual, and they don't even have to agree on everything. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter, no, we all agree, we all got the same philosophy. Yeah. It's, it's better the, when you don't. Yeah, it's the, it's the authentic engagement and wanting to go further. You're more interested in what can emerge between you than in pointing out, you know, in get, you know, making your own point or yeah, proving totally. this or that. Yeah, that's the so, collective yeah. right there, because it's, it's actually yeah. unity right there. And in that, there's, there's a unity, yeah. but at the same time, we, we doesn't, there's still individuals too. Yeah, of course. And I think they're not really, you know, in, in the greater scheme of things, it's part of a, a greater non-duality, if you like. Yeah. Because, you know, our, our individuality is to be, you know, heightened. It's really good. But individuation usually means separation. It doesn't have to. Yeah. The, the more we can authentically be ourselves and engage, I think, beyond the, the, that sense of separation, we, there can also be an ever deeper communion and sense of unity. Mm. And, and I think and that's really, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's and The potential lovely. for that, for human beings, is, you know, is untapped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that again, because that was lovely. That was a beautiful place to, for us to, to round off. It's just that 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 is the space, isn't it? Yeah. Is 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 that that yeah that unified place yeah. that is that is created again? You know, using the modalities of meditation and others to really to really nurture yourself to then be able to show up to have those yes. um, collective um, yeah. you know contributions yeah. with yeah. each other yeah. with each other to then to then move yeah. forward and that is like you said that's that is we we haven't been there as a collective uh -huh. we haven't been there as a collective species hence why there is still so yeah. much happening from separation yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's um mm. yeah. yeah that was nice
Yeah, it's powerful just even letting that in the yeah. what was possible. Yeah. So that's that's what really turns me on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Chris. You're welcome. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, just hope you loved that conversation as much as I loved it. Uh, me and Chris got turned on on the sofa, and uh, <laughs> um, wherever you are, and you know when you when you uh, when you watch this video, then as always. Um, I'm sending you big love. We have a lot of great people sat on the sofa with us now. Do please check us out. Come over and, uh, and check out some of the conversations and uh, get yourself on the sofa. And, and also the invitation always is not just to come and listen for sure, definitely, but also it's like get involved in these conversations yourself. Create them yourself. And uh, until till next time, take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.